This is CBS 2 News at 11. Developing now at 11, Israel on the verge of a ground invasion. And tonight, the humanitarian crisis in Gaza deepens. A six-year-old boy murdered in what police are calling an anti-Muslim attack. Now the FBI warns of a rise in threats amid the war. Plus... It's the hardest thing I ever had to do. The emotional return home for locals stranded in Israel for days. Good evening, I'm Jessica Moore. Developing at this hour, Israeli forces have positioned themselves along Gaza's border ahead of an expected imminent offensive. Nearly 2,700 Palestinians have died, according to the Gaza Health Ministry. Israel says the death toll is now 1,400 there, and 30 Americans are confirmed dead. All this as aid groups say the conditions in Gaza have deteriorated into a complete catastrophe. With Israeli troops poised for a ground invasion, Gaza is edging closer to a humanitarian disaster. On Sunday, Israel announced it was resuming water supplies to southern Gaza after shutting down water to the entire territory earlier this week. The United Nations said fuel reserves at Gaza's besieged hospitals are expected to last about another day. In an interview, President Biden told 60 Minutes Scott Pelley he does not foresee U.S. troops being called in to help Israel. I don't think that's necessary. Israel has one of the finest fighting forces in the country. President Biden is considering a trip to Israel in the coming days, according to sources with the Associated Press. The president has stood strongly behind Israel since Hamas attacked last Saturday. But on Sunday, he warned against a new occupation of Gaza. Do you support Israeli occupation of Gaza at this point? I think it'd be a big mistake. Look, what happened in Gaza, in my view, is Hamas and the extreme elements of Hamas don't represent all the Palestinian people. After meetings with Arab leaders in six nations, Secretary of State Antony Blinken is returning to Israel. Israel has the right, indeed it has the obligation, to defend itself against these attacks from Hamas and to try to do what it can to make sure that this never happens again. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer led a congressional delegation on a trip to Israel to show their support. At one point, lawmakers were rushed into a bunker amid rocket fire. We were having lunch at our hotel, and the sirens went off. Hamas had sent rockets towards Tel Aviv, and we all rushed into a shelter and had to stay there until the coast was clear. Hundreds of thousands of civilians are desperately trying to flee Gaza after Israel ordered them to evacuate amid airstrikes. Israel's military said 155 people are being held hostage by Hamas after it waged a gruesome terror attack on the Jewish state. Shira Al-Bag's 18-year-old daughter, Liri, is believed to be among the hostages. I'm a mother, and I want my daughter home now. I want my daughter to sleep in her bed now. Secretary of State Antony Blinken says a gate between Gaza and Egypt would reopen to humanitarian aid as early as tomorrow. Fleeing Israel has been the top priority this weekend for many people. Today, local families returned home, landing at JFK and Newark airports from Tel Aviv. We spoke with a Brooklyn resident who said she feared for her safety just trying to get to the airport. I'm going to leave my house. I'm going to go stay in a public area. I'm going to sit there and wait. And whatever is going to happen is going to happen. Kind of was the scariest part of it. I spent my trip crying basically. Every you know every hour or so, I'm like, oh my god, is this really happening? And they tell us finding flights out of Israel is still challenging. Major U.S. airlines like Delta, American, and United have suspended direct flights to and from Israel for the near future. The State Department has been arranging charter flights for U.S. citizens out of Israel heading to other European countries. More than a week after the war began, activists here at home continue to rally. CBS 2's Hannah Klieger shows how organizers on both sides are using prayer to ease their pain. On Staten Island, supporters of Israel prayed for the soldiers on the front lines and for the hostages taken last week by Hamas. The atrocities that took place are not a lie. They, they brandished it. They showed it. You cannot argue with the fact that this was absolute evil. We hope that they're going to go inside, they do their job, 
that free our passages. This was one of many events held on Sunday as activism around the world continues to build. In the evening, another vigil in Flushing, Queens. New Yorkers from several of the borough's synagogues mourn the dead and injured, thinking of family and friends. For me and for most of the people in this room, Saturday morning, eight days ago, the world shattered to pieces. Singing the Israeli national anthem in Livingston, New Jersey, congregants from dozens of synagogues came to condemn the actions of Hamas terrorists. Free the captives, bring the murderers and rapists to justice, and free Gaza and Israel from Hamas once and for all. In Mineola on Long Island, a huge crowd showed up in support of Palestinians and calling for peace. People worried, praying for their loved ones who they say are suffering in Gaza. We demand an immediate ceasefire, lifting of the blockade of Gaza, and a genuine effort towards a just and lasting peace between Israelis and Palestinians. We're just here to actually share our desperation, our sadness. Each side hoping to stop the suffering of innocent civilians caught in the middle of the violent escalation. Hannah Klieger, CBS2 News. A suspect is under arrest tonight for allegedly killing a six-year-old boy in what police are calling an anti-Muslim hate crime. Investigators in Illinois say the 71-year-old man stabbed the little boy to death and wounded his mother in response to the war between Israel and Hamas. It happened yesterday inside a home in suburban Chicago. The Council on American Islamic Relations is now speaking out. He paid the price for the atmosphere of hate and otherization and dehumanization that frankly I think we are seeing here in the United States. He was a lovely boy who loved his family, his friends, he loved soccer. Police say the boy was stabbed 26 times. His 32-year-old mother is expected to survive. That suspect now facing murder and hate crimes charges. FBI Director Christopher Wray says threats in the U.S. are rising after Hamas's attack on Israel. Wray confirms houses of worship for Jewish and Muslim Americans have been targets of threats, and he says the Bureau is moving quickly to mitigate them. Wray said, quote, here in the U.S., we cannot and do not discount the possibility that Hamas or other foreign terrorist organizations could exploit the conflict to call on their supporters to conduct attacks on our own soil. Stay with CBS2 for the latest developments on the war between Israel and Hamas on air and online at cbsnewyork.com. Actress Suzanne Summers has died just one day before her 77th birthday. She battled breast cancer for more than two decades. CBS2's Jenna DeAngelis takes a look back at her life and legacy. Affectionately known for playing bubbly blonde Chrissy Snow in the 70s sitcom Three's Company, Suzanne Somers filled homes with laughter. Have you seen my other shoe? What other shoe? The one that goes with this one. <laughs> she was also a best-selling author and entrepreneur who had many products to her name. If you believe in yourself and you focus and you're willing to work like a dog, <laughs> you can make your dreams come true. Her acting career began with small roles, including 1973's American Graffiti. I didn't even have three words. I mouthed the words, I love you, and uh, that was it. Her big role with Three's Company ended after five seasons. She said after asking for equal pay to her male co-star, she was fired. I went from being the, the number one actress on television in those desired demographics to now I couldn't get an interview. She eventually returned to the small screen, most notably in 1991's Step by Step. She pivoted to other ventures over the years, from talk shows to headlining a show in Las Vegas. And launching a health and fitness empire. I used to do aerobics till I dropped, then I found Thymaster. The health advocate was candid about her more than 23-year battle with cancer. In July, she announced it returned. I've always taken care of myself, and I never, ever, ever thought that I'd hear those words, you have breast cancer, applied to me. 
Summers passed away Sunday morning. Her publicist released a statement on behalf of her family, saying Suzanne was surrounded by her loving husband, Alan, her son, Bruce, and her immediate family. Her family was gathered to celebrate her 77th birthday on October 16th. Instead, they will celebrate her extraordinary life and want to thank her millions of fans and followers who loved her dearly. Enjoy each day because you never know what tomorrow will bring. A private family burial will take place this week with a memorial to follow next month. Summers was 76 years old. Jenna DeAngelis, CBS 2 News. To Washington now, where the House of Representatives is expected to vote on a new speaker on Tuesday, two weeks after Kevin McCarthy was ousted. House Republicans chose Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan as their nominee. However, some are skeptical Jordan will be able to secure enough support from moderates. He needs 217 votes to win. Democrats are expected to back Brooklyn Congressman Hakeem Jeffries. Still ahead at 11, remembering a one-year-old boy who died from fentanyl exposure at daycare. The family's message at a vigil tonight. Starting tomorrow, it's going to get more expensive to park in Manhattan. How much more you'll have to feed the meter. And she is officially the new queen of the box office. Taylor Swift breaking records this weekend. Vanessa. Well, it was a beautiful end to the weekend. Now the work week begins. Can we expect more rain or more sun over the next several? I'll have your full forecast coming up. Steve. All right, Vanessa, in sports, after what we saw from Aaron Rodgers today, the odds of him returning this year shot way up. And even though the offense struggled, the defense led the charge. We'll show you how they knocked off the last undefeated team in impressive fashion. That's later in sports.